Galaxian. I have come up with something that I think is kind of cool. I've wanted a solution for this for a very long time. I've always hated this board. Most of the time you have a bad ROM on this. They are corroded and nasty. The sockets suck. These things get bent. Just kind of a pain in the butt. Or you get a board that doesn't even have the ROM board on it. I have made a single ROM solution for Galaxian. And that's the board right there. Actually, I have a blank right here. It uses a 27128, and the whole program is just put together and loaded into that. And you have an LS08 for decoding. Yeah. So let's go ahead and play a game of this and then I'll go into the schematic and why you had to put the 08 on there, why you couldn't just put the ROMs together, ground both the select lines on this. Because a lot of times with a lot of games, you can just bypass the decoding altogether and ground pin 20 and 22 on one of these chips because the bank of ROMs on say Atari, Atari is a good example the whole bank of ROMs is always enabled it's just which one is it selecting right well with, when you put the whole ROM code into one ROM you can just bypass decoding altogether but you can't exactly do that with this and that's why I had to put the 08 in on the board. So I want to go ahead and play a game. And then uh, I'll get the schematic out. And we'll look at why I had to do that. Okay. I'll go ahead and turn the lights off for effect. Yeah, got a little too much red going on, don't I? Let me get in here really quick. Kind of dull that red down. That's better. Maybe a touch of brightness. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, that's too much red. Yeah, we're going to roll with it. That looks decent. All right. Got 
All right. Lights back on. But you can see it works fine. It's it's the it is the code. It's Galaxian code. It's just all put together on one ROM instead of being spread over five. So let's get the uh, schematic out and kind of go over it. And I will point out why I had to put this little piece of circuitry on here. And we're running address 13 on the board here. Let me get the board and my pencil. We're running address bit 13. Right there to pin 26 of the ROM. And then we have 7L pin 20. So it's basically pin 20 of this guy that we pick off. And that goes right there. And it's really simple. You're, you just tap in a couple vias. There's address 13 right there. And 7L pin 20 you can grab right there. You can see that. That's where you can grab 7L pin 20. Yeah. Galaxian, a nice single ROM solution. Get rid of this. So let's go to the schematic and look at that and see why the LA, LS08 is necessary. It is a must, actually. All right, let's do it. Okay, now we're going to take a peek at this schematic. I'm going to sit down and hopefully not bump anything. All right. This is that little ROM board. And here's the sockets. This right here is 7F. This is the socket that I have my board plugged into. And this is the vacant socket now. Okay, we have decoding on that little board. It's a 74LS42, and it's right here. And what this guy is doing, remember now, there's five ROMs on the little ROM board. One, two, three, four, five. They're called U, V, W, Y, Z. And four of them, see, there's basically two ROM banks here. You can think of it that way. This LS42 is enabling these four guys. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So we can eliminate this because these are all going to be compiled into the same ROM. So we know this guy, we can totally just get rid of this. And ground pin 18. Okay, so yeah, that's that. And now, when we look at this other guy, this one right here has separate decoding. This one, pin 18, has a chip enable line. And actually, that line right there, we do not care about. We can ground that because remember we're going to have all five of these ROMs in the same ROM. Our decoding signals that we care about are pin 20s. You have pin 20 of the socket here which is enabling four EPROMs. It's enabling these four and then this pin 20 of 7L is only enabling that one ROM. So we can't ground both 18 and 20. We can ground 18 because we can have the chip 
outputs always enabled or the chip can always be enabled but this is too you can get confused here with chip enable and output enable it's basically chip enable one and chip enable two they both have to be low for the thing to operate otherwise it's tri-stated so they both need to be low so you can ground one of those on every one on one of those lines can be grounded. We only need one enable line because we only have one ROM. Right? But we have two very separate enables here. You know, see, if this was enabling all of these at the same time, and it was only, well, that's not going to be that way either because these then are being separately enabled. <clears throat> Most of the time when you see Atari, take take Atari for example, you'll have one decoder. Say this is 0 through 9. That's 10. You can have 10 ROMs. Chip 18 is going to be the enable line. 20 will be grounded on every ROM because you have one selector. That's it. We have two selectors. That's why, it, that's why we have to have the 08. An Atari board will have pin 20. Usually they have 18, actually. But remember, they're both enables. You know, they're both just simply enable lines. So you can have either one of these. Atari usually grounds pin 18. And their select line is 20. So this thing will be going to pin 20 on every ROM. And 18 is grounded because it doesn't matter. You only have one enable. Here we have two clear enables. And since we have two clear enables, we have to use both of them, obviously. So I have pin 20 of both of these sockets going into an AND gate. So as long as both of these are high or disabled, the ROM will be disabled because, you know, the, the enable line is high. The minute that the split second, the nanosecond, that one of these drops low, either one of these lines drops low, that output of that AND gate is going to enable that ROM. So we're being enabled on this enable. So when this part of circuitry on the board, the CPU, that is enabling this line, this line and this line have to both be respected. We can't, if we ground it out, if we ground out all of these lines, then this is just going to be totally confused about, say, the CPU is trying to enable this guy. Well, this guy's enabled too if it's just grounded. So when this line is enabled, it'll enable the ROM. And then when this one disables or this one enables, it'll enable the ROM again. So they can have their turn. Both of these lines can have their turn at reading the ROM, at dumping data on, onto the bus. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, it's hard to explain. It, it's harder for me to, to, to explain how I, how I see it, but that, that's how it is. You know, because you have two enable lines on these ROMs. And you, when you have one ROM, you really only need one enable. So... Yeah, that is a quick and hopefully coherent explanation. You have two separate enables here. We have an, separate enables up here too, but we don't need that decoding because we have the whole thing in one ROM. So we just need to, to look at this decoding. And since there are two signals, you know, since there's two signals here, then we can't just we can't just uh, ignore one of the signals. 
and say just put this one to the ROMs because this signal doesn't enable this address bank. This signal enables the address bank of these four and this signal enables the address bank solely of this EEPROM. Man, that's a better way of explaining it. I was having a difficult time, but yeah, you have two separate EEPROM banks, this address range and this address range. Now they are, they coincide. You know, this is uh, zero, actually zero to uh, seven FF is right here. 800 to FFF is right here. And then 1000 to 17 FF, 18 to uh, 1 FFF, and then I believe 2000 to 27 FF are right here. Yeah, whatever I said. That's how it goes. And this, this, uh, this signal right here enables 2000 through 27 FF only. And this line enables zero through one FFF. And when the CPU is trying to enable, the reason you can't just run these together and because it's two different banks. So you run them into an AND gate. And you, like I said, the minute that one of these drops low, the minute, the nanosecond that one of these drops low will enable the whole ROM bank because it's all in line. It's zero to 27FF. But the address that is applied on that 27128 will coincide with what the thing is trying to access. basically sidestepping some of the decoding but you're not sidestepping these two lines all right well that is a quick and hopefully like I said hopefully that explains it well leave comments if you don't get it if you don't understand what I was trying to say or if you do understand let me know in the comments if my teaching skills are decent or not. Anyway, that's it, guys. I just kind of wanted to bring that up. And all of these boards that I make like this, and I, I've actually come up with quite a few of these, along with uh, making replications of boards, replications if that's a word, duplicating certain boards, and then making boards like this, single EEPROM type stuff, and different stuff like that. Whenever I find oddball chips or, or programs or, or ROM files or anything like that. I, I use my Patreon page as like a storage facility for all of that stuff. I put all of my PCBs like this. I load them all up on there. So this one and others are available on Patreon, on my Patreon page. So you can check that out if you would like. Thank you, and that's going to do it for this. And we'll see you guys all on the next Classic Arcade Repair. Bye for now.